As a programmer, and in general, people should understand how their networks work. That helps them to really understand the importance of networking and how to set them up and in a general way demystify how networks really work. So we just want to look at this in a general way. But as a programmer, you will definitely come across this. There is pretty much no application that doesn't need to communicate with an external service. Even games now have in-app purchases where you purchase new maps and so forth. That is networking. It needs a network to purchase those new little bits in your game. You also have, let's say, instant messaging apps. You have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. All of these different apps that you run on your mobile device and on your desktop computers and whatever computers you have, everything is connected. It's becoming more connected because that's what makes computers really special. When you take one computer and make it communicate with another computer, and when you consider that really it's not the computer that's doing that, it's the human being that's setting up that request, is making that data to go to another computer. So really, you can think of it like a human being communicating to another human being. So this is why it's important to understand networks. So let's start out with the most basic of network types, a local network. So forget an internet. An internet is where computers can communicate with other computers all across the globe anywhere. But an intranet is a local network. That's what intranet means, it's internal. So whether that be a home full of computers connected to the same network or a small business or even any type of business, if it's local, if it's to this specific vicinity, we would say intranet or local network. So let's take a look at just one of the most basic forms of a local network. Now, how do we transfer bits? Because that's all we are transferring. Networks can't work with, again, programming languages. They're not submitting strings and whatever else. Again, it's hardware. It can only work with ones and noughts or base two numbers. Now, one of the most basic ways to make a connection is to use one of these cables. This is called an Ethernet, LAN, or a Cat5 cable. Whatever name you want to give it and why we give this cable so many names, I have no idea. That's just networking for you. But they all mean the same thing, the same basic cable. But I like using the name LAN cable because LAN is an acronym for Local Area Network. So that tells us that this cable here is to, an, to establish a network, but also a local network. You know, you couldn't really connect this cable right here to a server all the way over in America. Everybody would trip over the cable, it would be no good. And then what happens when you want to connect one from Russia? Well, then you've got to fly over to America, unplug it and go to Russia and plug it back in. So this is why we say it's a local area network cable. It's for your computers in the vicinity. And it allows you to transfer bits and bytes between computers. So what I can do is I can plug this ethernet into my laptop and this ethernet into another laptop computer that has another ethernet port or LAN port. And then what happens is one of my computers can submit some data and that data, again, it's just a cable so it can only transfer ones and noughts, positive and negative charges. It goes down the cable and then it will transfer it to the other port. And you can connect computers directly this way. But also, that computer can then also send data back. So it provides ones and noughts here, and then it provides it back. So it's input and an output cable. It does both. It allows you to send and to receive bits between two computers. Now, as soon as you have two computers on the end of this cable, you have made a local network. You don't have to have 50 computers to make a local network. You don't even have to have a router. You just have to have a cable like this connected to two computers. You have a network. 
And likewise, when we think of a router, why don't we think of that as a computer? A router is a computer. It has a chipboard, it has silicon, it has firmware. It has procedures, it even has memory, it has RAM, so that it can temporarily store data and it can also delete data at its whim. So a router is a computer. So whenever I connect this to my laptop and this to my router, again, just like a laptop to a laptop or whatever it is, if I connect two devices using this cable, I get a local network. Now you only have two types of connectivity wired or wireless. You can't have any other type. Now wireless needs aerial technology. Aerials can transmit, meaning send bits, and also receive bits. And this aerial right here can send and receive. So again, just like network cables, they can send and receive. You must have it both ways in order for it to be a network. Think of it like if you had two people. You can't just have one person talking in a conversation, you have to have both talking. And networks are the same. So wireless technology allows you to transmit your positive and negative charges through the air. Now you can't see those positive and negative charges, but all they are is the exact same magnetic positive and negative charges being transmitted through this aerial right here. Now, this aerial on this particular router is big, bulky and ugly. And you probably go, my router doesn't have one of them. Well, it does. They all have aerials in them. Your laptop has an aerial. Your smartphone, your tablet, as long as it's wireless enabled, it has an aerial built in. It's just not so clunky. They make it nice, slim and slender and chuck it inside the actual frame of your device so you don't get to see the aerial. It's not big and bulky and it can't just be snapped off easy. But it's the same technology. An aerial can transmit magnetic charges through the air to another aerial that can receive those magnetic charges and it can also send back magnetic charges as well. It's just bits being transferred wirelessly over the air. Same magnetic charges. So what I want you to understand is in order for you to have a network, the only criteria you need to meet is two or more computers connected together and they can communicate with each other. It's not a one-way relationship. Networks are two-way relationships. I can send and I can also receive. Likewise, your router is a computer. It's designed for networking, so it's a type of computer that we call a router. It routes out paths and it gives us data and transmits data. Now also we have two types of networks. We have a local network and a global network. We call local networks an intranet and global networks an internet, external. And there are only two types of connection. You have a wired connection or a wireless connection, but regardless of the type of connection, the charge is the same. A positive charge is a one, a negative charge is a zero. Ones and zeros, that's all your hardware can work with and that's all your network can work with.